record with. Okay, make sure it's recording. And then we'll start. It is. Okay. It's working. It's working. We're set. Okay. So go ahead and say your full name. Mm-hmm. Your full name. My full name is Benish D. Taylor. And in one of the writings I saw that Granby had written, she said you were the only one that didn't get a middle name. Is that true? I didn't get a middle name. You didn't get a middle name. Okay. 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 And do you know why your parents selected that name for you? I have no idea. Except I would tell you this little story. One time we were in Calgary, Canada at a convention. And I was at a ladies' luncheon and we all had our nameplates on. And the lady across from me said, my, that's an unusual name. Is it spelled right on your name tag? And I said, yes. And she says, I've never heard that before. And the little lady down at the table, she says, oh, yes. She said, I have a, a niece and a sister with that name. And I said, is it spelled the same way? And she said, yes. And she was a, a French ah. So I've always said, I think my mother read a French novel. Ah, but okay. you also have French heritage, so that could be it too. Mm-hmm. You have French heritage, yes, from from French and a Canadian. Well, well, that's that's all I know about my name. Oh, okay, so it's French descent. <laughs> oh, beautiful name. And did you have a nickname or any nicknames? Oh, I think uh, probably sometime in my life, but you know, you get with a name like Benice, you get Ben and Benny, uh, but no. Nothing today. Back. Nothing really to say. I didn't. I don't like it. Thanks. My mom doesn't either. She's the first. Well, she calls her full name. So, uh, what do you know about the family surname? About the last name Gates. Well, you know, I you probably know as much as I do. I don't know very much, really. I know um, really nothing, actually. I know some of the history of my, my grandparents, but not really. Yeah, anything. and wasn't it along the Dayton side that had the that came in to Plymouth Rock? That name extended clear up till then, I believe. Well, the Dayton name. It's a very early American, for sure. Well, I know, you know, there was a Dayton that signed the Declaration of Independence, uh-huh. uh, and of course, I know some of the relatives. Uh, my grandmother, Hudson Dayton, supposedly, her ancestors discovered the Hudson River. Now, that's what I've heard. And they must have something to do with the Hudson Dayton Company, I would imagine, yeah. with that lineage. I, uh, it must be somewhere connected with that family as well. And that's back where we lived in Minnesota, the Hudson Dayton Company, or Dayton Hudson. So I'm sure we've got some connection into that as well. Yeah. Okay, let's see. And was there a naming tradition in your family? What do you mean a tradition? Well, and it says here, like naming the firstborn in the name of the father or the name of the grandfather, anything like that. I don't think so. I don't think there uh, I, Well, the only thing I know that uh, on my mother's side, there was a, a grandfather, father, junior, and senior. Yep, George, junior, and senior. And then, of course, my brother George. Yes, that was true. named after our grandfather. That's true. So, that's true. So George ran three generations. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the name Phoebe. Mm-hmm. I did research back. goes actually back four generations. So if I have a little girl, I'm going to name her Phoebe. So. <laughs> My time's running out, so it may end up being a cat like Phoebe the dog. <laughs> let's see. Okay, now what city were you born? Midway, mm-hmm. And who's home, or was it in a hospital? I think I was born at home in our home. Okay. Do you know what time you were born, or did they record that kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Or how much you weighed, or anything like that? I know that I weighed 10 pounds. Oh, <laughs> I've been told that all my life. <laughs> I hope you baby. And what was it like being the baby of the family? That's the question my dad added. What was that like? Well, you see, that's an answer I can't give you because I wasn't with my family. Uh, <coughs> and, well, our 
family was broken up when I was two, you see, yeah. so. Yeah, wouldn't be the same in most situations. Mm-hmm. And where did you fall in the family that you went to stay with? You went to stay with one of your father's sisters, correct? I went to stay with my aunt and an uncle Ed. That was dad's sister. Uh huh. And then uncle Ed. Okay. And where did you fall within their children? Uh, they they had one son, Curtis, who was five years older, and then Basil was a year younger than me. Okay. I was a little over two, you see, when I went to live with them. And did they have any more children? Or was it just the three yes, of you? And later on, they had a girl, Barbara. And then I'm sure you met Barbara Patterson. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And were you close? The two of you close? Mm-hmm. Were the two of you close? What? Were the two of you, Barbara, were you and Barbara close? Like sisters or did mm-hmm. she come along much later? Well, see, I only lived uh, uh, with them until Barbara was about seven. Okay. Barbara was seven years younger than me. Okay. Younger. Okay. And the next question is, well, how did your family come to live in that city? And I think I know the answer to that one. How did my family come to what? To live in Midway. Oh, I don't know. (laughs) I think the answer is we don't know. I don't think that anything in particular. We have when they went there, but we don't know why. That was my mother's family that lived in Midway. Of course, my dad's family lived in Heber. Yep. Okay. And it says, were there other family members in the area? Yes, from both sides of the family. Oh, yeah. From both Bonner and Dayton. Okay, and you stayed with Edna and uh, and Ed, you said, for how many years? I stayed with them until I was 13. So from about age two? Well, I was a little over two, but anyway, two to, two, three. to 13. Okay, two, three. I think I left uh, right after my birthday when I was 13. Hmm. And what was the style of that home like? Well, it was just, uh, I don't know what style you'd call it. It was a very nice house. Um, of course, at the beginning when I went there, you know, we had no, no plumbing. We didn't have electricity. The plumbing came later, and I don't know exactly when, but it was a happy day, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it came before you left when you were 13, oh, yeah. so somewhere in there, plumbing came. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it, uh, of course, we just had the one bathroom, and we had a, a large, a very large dining room. And the living room, which in those days was called a parlor. Okay. And you hardly ever went in the parlor. <laughs> and then we had, uh, uh, upstairs we had three bedrooms. Mm-hmm. And downstairs we had one. And of course just one bath. Finally we had a bedroom. Okay, telephones? Mm-hmm. Did it have the telephone? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It had telephone. It was on the wall, and you had to ring it this way. <laughs> so you say the parlor was the equivalent of today's living room, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. When I was on my honeymoon in Midway, we went and stopped at all the old homes, just kind of to peek in, and somebody was home at one of them and, and offered to let us come in, and so we got to look around. And I'm not sure which home it is. I don't think it was the one that that your dad and mom had. I don't think it was. I think probably it was his great grandfather Bonner's. Probably. Because you know that's been restored. Yes, oh yes. That was beautiful. It was a bookstore for a while. But now it's up for lease again. Oh, yeah. I want mom and dad to see. Well, I thought it was a museum for a while. It was for a while. I think they should make it into a quilt shop or something that's applicable to the time Mm -hmm. or something. It was a beautiful bookstore. 
to do something else. Hello? Telemarketing no. calls is driving me crazy. Yeah. Um, Oh, it must, it must have been Great Grandfather Bonner's house that you were in. And, um, you know, that house was written up in several magazines. Oh, wow. And as a matter of fact, I just recently gave those write ups I had the pictures of the house and the write ups to my nephew. Oh. Stuart. Oh. Because I figured, you know, eventually they just get thrown away. Now you know that, uh, your grandmother. And my brother George were born in that house. Yes, yes, I saw that. She'd written that on the back of one of the pictures that I brought. Yeah. And and I should look at those pictures because then I can tell you which house it was that we got to go in. I'll pull those out and tell you exactly which one we got to go in. Mm-hmm. Had a white rocking chair on the doorstep that she said had been there for years and years and years, mm-hmm. hundreds of years, or over a hundred years. Mm-hmm. And then that was a beautiful old house. Yes, it was. And she mm-hmm. shows that part like she said and talks about the part and how it was a very special room and. All the doorknobs were still original, and most yeah. of the doors. And some things have been changed. But you know, across from that was Will, Uncle Will Bonner's house. And across from him was Grandma Bonner's house. Uh-huh. And across from there was the Bonner Merc. Yep. And did you know they turned it back into what's now called the Midway Mercantile? They, oh, is They've changed it back, and now it's an antique shop, and it's beautiful. Well, is it not a mercantile anymore? She calls it the Midway Mercantile, but it's an antique shop. Right. And she just named it that in honor of its original name, being the uh, Bonner Mercantile. So when I told her that, she was thrilled that I said I was there to visit Grampy and Gramps' grave that day. And she was just thrilled that I was family and just said, oh, do you know much about it? And I said, yes, I have old pictures. So she was very nice, very happy to hear that. <laughs> okay. So you've already told me how long you lived in that home. Was there anything special, any special times that you remember in that house? Special birthdays or occasions, births or anything? Well, I don't think so, Natalie. Nothing, nothing stands yeah. out. Okay. Just ordinary things like everybody has. Yep. And what other homes did you live in after when you left when you were 13? We, I didn't ever live in a house again for a long, long time. And we moved so many times I couldn't even begin to remember. Uh, your um, grandmother probably told you all those places. I have them more in her history than ever hearing them. Because you see, she, um, your grandmother got married when we lived in the Miller apartment, which is where the big new convention center is or whatever they oh, call yeah. What do they call that? The South Palace Convention Center? Yeah. The big Mormon one. Oh, oh the conference did. center. The conference center. Yeah. Yeah. That's where our apartment was. The Miller apartment. There. And so in Salt Lake. So when did you move from Midway? Didn't you live in Heber for a time or no? Well, when I moved to, to see, when I moved to um, Heber, I was just past two. That was after Mother died. Right. And then I moved from from Hebrew to Salt Lake when I was 13. Okay. So they were mostly apartments after that. Oh, lots of apartments. <laughs> and at that time, were you then with your father? You're back with your father. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. To Salt Lake. And before those, before your grandmother and granddad were married, you see, uh, Dad and George and Phyllis and I lived together. And that's when we moved a lot. So Dad, George, and Phyllis. And the older children had already moved away, most of them to Oregon, correct? I don't, I don't remember that uh, George moved to Oregon. That no, time. the older kids. Um, like no, they didn't move to no, Oregon. They didn't. Oh, they, they, no, they didn't. Oh, they didn't. No, Marge and uh, Frank went to California. Oh, that's right, that's right. San Francisco area. Okay. 
So you didn't have much time with the older children. They were probably gone fairly soon. No, I didn't see either. I didn't see Frank, my brother Frank, for 17 years. Oh, wow. And, of course, Marge, uh, she came to Heber a couple of times, and that was the only time I saw her until in the 1930s. Yeah, Granby wrote uh, the story of going when uh, she got to go out and see Marge in San Francisco and how much time she had on that trip. Mm-hmm. She felt like such a princess. <laughs> that was a neat trip. So what is your earliest childhood memory? What's the earliest thing you think you can remember? My earliest what memory? Childhood memory. So what? Childhood. Childhood when you were just little. What's the earliest thing you can remember? Is it a, a person or a place or a... Well, I just don't have a lot of memory about them because it was so long ago, remember? Uh, I just don't know what my earliest memory is. Okay. Was. I have one, but it's a very vague memory that no one would probably ever want to hear about. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm much older before I start remembering things. Some people have surprisingly early memories, and I'm, I'm amazed at that. Okay, let's see. We've got name all your siblings and their dates of birth, but I have all those. So do you? I do. You have Marge and Frank and uh-huh. Rex and... Uh-huh, and even Rex, yeah. And George and yeah. Phyllis. And that was... Shortly after, and, and I don't know if you'll know the answer to this because you hadn't been born yet, but in 1907, that journal that I have from your mother, she describes going to the, to the cemetery a lot. Would oh. that have been to visit Rex, perhaps? I wonder how come I never saw that journal. If you'd like to, oh, I did bring it. I don't think I, Mom has it. My Mom has it. I'd be happy to send it to you. I never heard of such a... Yeah, Mom hadn't even read it. She found it in a box and said, well, look at this, and saw whose it was, and then started reading it. And then we realized whose it was. Just a, written inside of a Wisconsin Battalion notebook, a children's school book notebook. Oh, I, and no one realized what it was. So really interesting. But well, she where did your mother find it? In a box of things that she got from, I believe, from Granby when she passed away, I believe, you know, in a a decorative box, a very beautiful box, but it was kind of at the bottom, and it looked like, like I said, like a notebook that you wouldn't consider to be a journal. It looks like something from school children or something. We open it up, and it says what it is. And she would write, you know, her, her things when each day. Never heard of that. Of course, never got to see it. Well, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Well, we just discovered, I think we just discovered within this year that that's what it is. So... But she did describe that several times that they made several trips to, to visit the cemetery, and that might be why to visit Rex. Now, when you have uh, uh, all the dates of the the different my different siblings, what names do you have? I have Farah for Frank, and my mind is going blank for Marge. Marge. Marge was Florence. Florence. Yes, Florence. I work with a gal named Florence. Well, I'm surprised I forgot that. So yeah, I have Farrah and Florence, and then I don't know what years they changed their names. Do you know what years they actually changed their names? They, yeah, they did change them legally. Uh huh. And uh, you've got that camera going, but anyway, I'll tell you this little story. You know, when March was in the nursing home, uh, she became quite forgetful. And so one day when I went up to see her, I said, uh, I asked her a question. She said, oh, she said, I don't remember. She said, you know, I'm getting so forgetful, I don't even remember my own name. And I said, well, what is your name? And she said, Florence LeVon. And I said, oh. I said, don't you remember that you changed your name? She said, I did. What did I change it to? And uh, I told her, Marjorie, and you know, Natalie, now that was the first time. She didn't say Florence LeVon that time. She said Florence. 
So a couple of weeks later when I went up, we go through the same question, and this time she says her name is Florence Lavon. She didn't remember that she changed her name. She didn't remember that she was Florence Lavon, uh, that she was she wasn't Marjorie. And she must have been Marjorie for a much greater portion of her life than she was Florence. She changed her name when she was very young. Yeah. I think. Uh, wow. I think she probably changed her name in her early 20s. Yeah. And yet, you now you know her name was M-A-R-G-E-R-Y. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spelled differently than I've ever seen it. Yeah. Well, isn't that interesting that she would go back to remembering her full name before that? Yeah. That is amazing. And then Frank did the same thing. Huh. I think, I don't know that they changed them about the same time, but I know they were both young when they did. And did they choose their own new name? Did they no, select them yes, themselves? No. Oh, okay. That wasn't the... And I think uh, Frank wanted to keep, because he was uh, Bonner, so he wanted to keep the same initials. Oh. Uh, so he was Sarah Bonner. Oh. Uh, uh, Dayton. Uh-huh. And then he was, became Frank Bonner Dayton. Well, that's a smart idea. He kept the same initials. That makes mm-hmm. sense. That makes sense. But she didn't remember that she changed it to Marjorie. How interesting. And George was a musician, correct? Mm-hmm. George was a musician, right? Yeah. A wonderful musician. Isn't that why they moved to Salt Lake, so that he could go to school and pursue the music? Well, yes, because he, he, um, he started music very young. And, of course, he had his own uh, uh, orchestra, for a long time, and he taught music. And did he play multiple instruments? He, he played the saxophone and the trombone. Uh, not trombone, saxophone, clarinet. Clarinet? Mm-hmm. He was very talented. That's amazing. I think my mom even remembers hearing him perform once or something. I think she was talking about that. What was George's middle name? Just to make sure I have it right. Elmo. Elmo. Yep, I did have that. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then Phyllis said, Elmo. And Denise. And you don't know why they didn't give you a middle name? You see, for years uh, I had been told that I was named after my mother, and it was Annette. But then when I finally got my... Uh, my birth certificate. There was no N N on it. Oh. But both uh, Dad and Edna used to say that I was Didn't born with two names, but they didn't ever show up on my, on my birth certificate. Maybe they intended them to be, and they weren't there. Huh? That's too bad. That's where it's always confusing, though, because Phoebe and that, and then Phoebe Alexander has the middle initial A, too. So whenever I'm looking at pictures or documents, it's hard to tell who sometimes who's who if you don't look at the date. <laughs> okay. You probably know more about the family than I do. Only what Granby wrote, mostly, what mm-hmm. I got from her wonderful history. Um, the next question is, and it's probably not applicable because you were so young when your mother passed away. You were so small that you probably don't remember anything around that. Nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. A two would be hard to remember anything, let alone something like that. Um, are, are there any physical characteristics or traits that run in your family that you've been told about, that you do something like your mother or you do something like your father? I don't. I don't think so. Don't really know. Know. Uh, little mannerisms. Uh-huh. I see mannerisms of, uh, uh, you should see mannerisms of Frank and George and Dad. Okay. But nothing specific. And of course, uh, Phyllis, I think I always was told that she looked like Mother. I couldn't see that in the pictures I've seen of my mother, but then, because of course they were both redheaded. And then you can't see that in black and white photos, that might have helped. Mm-hmm. I can't see that. Oh. But I, I 
there aren't too many uh, uh, photos of my mother, but I couldn't see Phyllis in them. But maybe it was just the red hair that people thought they looked like. Yeah. Let me show you the ones that I have. Okay. And, uh, boy, it would be neat to see those together. And this was just not too long before she got married. Oh. Okay. Because she's got the year on there, but it's the same year she got married, so I wasn't sure if it was before or after. It does have the year on She wrote it in 1929. Oh, wait, that would have been before because they got married in 31? They got married in 30. 30. Mm-hmm. But what's before? What's before? Mm-hmm. And what is this? It's got, like, Japanese or Chinese script on there? Is that the photographer? Probably. Must have been. Because on the photo, too, I believe. So oh, probably, uh, yeah. Because see, that was taken in Salt Lake. So probably the photographer's moniker or something. Yeah, probably. Okay. But that's one of my favorites, that, that one. Let me just look that so fancy. And then here's a, probably the same year of Ward. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember those two when they were recording. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an old one of the mercantile. That's upside down. Oh, my Keep that turning one? it. It's the mercantile. Keep turning it one more turn. There you go. Oh. That's probably mother and somebody. I think Marge, uh, her, was it her cousin or her sister Margie? Probably Margaret. Margaret, Margaret. Mm-hmm. And, oh, Maggie. She referred to her as Maggie in her journals, I believe. Oh, my goodness. And here's another one. And is this, is this your mother? I believe it is. Yes, I know. Oh, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, because I, I have that picture or have had it. And we found another book full of baby pictures. Giant, beautiful French cover, beautiful book, but none of them had names on it except this one picture, and it says Phoebe. So we think it's your mother's baby picture? Is that possible? Probably. Probably. It's on the, on the back. Somebody hand wrote. I'm sure that would be mother. Uh huh. Somebody hand wrote the name Phoebe. Uh huh. So we were so glad that's the only one that had a name on it. We were just so glad. Now, this isn't the house. And see, this is what Granby wrote on the back of that one. So that'll tell you which house that is. She's written on the back of that one that she was born in this house. Yeah, it's the same house. Oh, okay. the one that I got to go inside. That's the one that the folks let us come in. Well, that must be Grandma Bonner's house. Uh, we, we passed this 
back and forth so we could laugh over it. Oh, I have to find it. Okay. Show it to you. And you know who this is. Oh! <laughs> That's on my wall. <laughs>
was painting. I did that with some later years. Okay. And did you have a favorite blanket or anything like that or a favorite toy that you had to go to sleep with or anything? Mm -hmm. If I did, I don't remember. <laughs> You're out of that too quickly. Or any imaginary friends? No. I don't think so. Emerson has some that come and go. I'm not sure if they're the same ones or not. <laughs> and what was your favorite thing to do for fun? In Midway, let's, let's break it into sections. In well, Midway. Uh, not Midway, but Heber. Oh, okay. fun we used to have. Uh, we, my friends, we would get together and we would walk from Heber to Midway to go swimming at the hot pot. And, of course, we would take a lunch and nibble along the way and then walk home. That was a day's journey. Now, did your father run a lunch counter in Heber mm -hmm. for a time? He ran, he ran a, a little store and he had a, a lunch counter and he had candy and candy bars and and it was a shoe shine stand in it that George used to sign the shoes. And before that one, he had a little store right out on the corner, which was more like a wagon. And that was just candy and um, a pop and stuff like that. Just in a little wagon. And that was where I fell in on the stove when I was, and my brother George was tending the, the shop. Uh -oh. And I was there with him, and I fell on the hot plate. Ooh. And George picked up my hand, and we had a big, there was a big tub with the soda pop in it and the ice, and he just punched me into that uh, tub, and that's probably what saved my hand. Oh. He just tripped and fell right out of the hot plate. Okay. Uh, Ouch. About how old were you when that happened? Oh, I must have been probably five or six. Oh. So you had times where you were with your father and times that you were spending time with your aunt and then uncle and but Yes, see, yes, uh, 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 up until the time, I don't remember exactly when Dad went to Salt Lake, but during the years he was in Heber, of course, your mother and George were there also. So, of course, I did see them often. Mm -hmm. And I think Dad came to see me very often. Yeah. Because, you see, Dad lost his sight before I was born. Mm -hmm. So he never saw me. And the story goes that I could talk before I could walk. Because Dad spent so much time with me on his knee singing to me and telling me stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody's okay to me. <laughs> I know that Granby says it hurts. Uh, Grammy says in her memoirs that you were his favorite. <laughs> That's probably why he got to spend so much time with him. I appreciated what time he got to spend with him. Okay, did you have chores and things that you had to do? Indeed, I did. Who <laughs> <I> did? <laughs> Lots of chores, Natalie, though. I would say the one I disliked the most was scrapping the kitchen floor. Mm -hmm. Because as a child, it seemed to me that kitchen was just Acres. <laughs> and it's funny, that's what your mother's journal consists mostly of, what her daytime chores were, mm -hmm. what chores she had to do that day. Well, I had a lot of chores, you know. You had to wash the dishes, and you had to help cook, you had to help wash. You did everything. Mm -hmm. You did everything. Okay. Did you ever receive an allowance? Oh, no. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. <laughs> That's a modern idea. 
And what was school like for you as a child? Don't remember very much about it, um, really. Um, I remember that there, if there was the one instance that wasn't very pleasant, and um, I don't remember too much about it. And was it a one-room schoolhouse? Was it? Oh no, Heber North School is still standing. Oh, and uh, that's. Uh, that's where I went until I went to Salt Lake. Because in those days in Hebrew, you didn't have middle school or junior high or anything. So you went to grade school through the eighth grade. Oh. And then you went to high school. But when I went to Salt Lake, I went to junior high school. And I was 13, so I think it was the seventh grade. Maybe it was the seventh grade. Seventh grade. Maybe it could have been the eighth. But anyway, I went to, because junior high school was seven, eight, and nine in those days. And then in those days, high school was just three years. So 10, 11, and 12. Mm-hmm. And that's how it was for me, too. Oh, it was? Mm-hmm. Oh. And in Washington, when we lived in Washington, it wasn't. It was mm-hmm. different. It was 9, 10, 11, and 12. Mm-hmm. And then middle school was just 8 and 9. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was one of your favorite subjects? In grade school? Oh, in any time. The older you got, did you have one that you loved? Well, one my, one? my uh, favorite subjects were always things to do with business, business spelling, you know, and typing, bookkeeping, and whatever. So the grade school was Heber North School, mm-hmm. and that's still there? Oh, I think it is. It's it a big school. Probably and then the junior high schools in Salt Lake? I went to um, West Junior in Salt Lake now. And high school? East High School. Where's my dad? Were there any activities or clubs or sports that you participated in? In school? Mm-hmm. Oh. We, you know, we had gym classes and that sort of thing, but in those days we didn't have all the sports that they have now. Well, what about, did they have clubs or anything either? Mm-hmm. Did they have clubs or activity groups that weren't sports related, but were more... Well, if they did, I didn't belong to them. <laughs> <laughs> Not very common. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And do you remember any of the fads or the styles from you? Use the hairstyles and the clothes. From uh, what? When? Well, one stand out if it were junior high or high school or whatever. When something came onto the scene that was new or different. No, I don't. I don't remember that. I always liked beautiful clothes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And were there some favorite songs or musical groups? So many favorite songs, honey, I couldn't begin to tell you. <laughs> Any one or two that stand out? Oh, I can't think of any. I just recently uh, had Stuart's wife get me some tapes of some of the, some CDs, uh-huh. and some of the, the songs. Oh. that I like, and I haven't even had time to play them all yet. Oh, but I well, love music because, you know, Salt Lake and Salt Lake, Salt Lake was a dancing town in my era. We even had um, monthly, I think it was monthly dances at our ward. Oh, wow. And uh, then, of course, we had several ballrooms, and all the big bands came to Salt Lake. Oh. Salt Air and Lagoon. Uh-huh. And the coveys. And dance floor. 
Well, apparently, yeah. So it was a big band there that was the fun. Okay, did you have any pets? Did they do that much? Did it go on? Pets? Dogs, cats, birds, gerbils? Did many people have pets? Uh, of course we had, you know, in Hebrew we had dogs and we had cats. But the cats were more outside outdoor cats. And of course there was always a dog. I was wondering a working dog. But the dog was more my uh, cousins, you know, based on Curtis. It was yeah. more their pet. Yeah. And of course I didn't like cats. <laughs> Were you ever mentioned in the newspaper? No. No, I never made any headlines. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Did headlines pretty so far. <laughs> Nowadays that's a good thing, probably. <laughs> and who was your best friend growing up? Well, I think probably in Hebrew. My, I had a lot of good friends, but maybe my best one was my cousin Dorothy. Dorothy Buys. She was just a year older than me, and but we were in the same grade. And so I think probably I'd have to say she was my best friend then. Mm -hmm. And in Salt Lake in school, I never had a best friend necessarily in, in school. At that point, by the time you were in high school, Granby was married, right? Mm -hmm. Phyllis was married by the time you started high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, three and a half years. And yeah. she was married, and they were married in 1930. Yeah. Oh, did I ask you what year you graduated from high school? Well, huh, well you can skip that one. See, I didn't act. I quit high school just short of my graduation to go to business college. Oh. LDS Business College? Mm -hmm. I went to graduated from Hanniger's Business College. That's still there. Mm -hmm. Tenegers is still, it's still there. there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I hear about that all the time. Of course, in those days, Tenegers was it. You know, yeah. Tenegers was it. Yeah. Huh. Now it just got his name problem. Mm -hmm. Can I use your restroom? Sure, right okay. over there. Straight ahead? Right behind you. Okay, no, I'll put this on pause. It's good. It's, they don't do anything but mop the floors and do the vacuuming. Okay. Oh, okay. This one is interesting. What world events, such as the Depression or World War One or World War Two, had the most impact on you while you were growing up? Well, probably the Depression and World War Two, because I was grown up by then, you know. Yeah. Well enough to know what was going on. Because mm -hmm. see, we were. Um, The Depression years were, were pretty bad, and then the war years, you know, Glenn was in the service, and I did join him, and uh, we were together from, well, let's see, I joined him in Atlantic City in March of 44, and then the war was over in 45, and he was discharged in September of 45. So, of course, those years and the Depression before, it was, it was pretty bad. And were you married by then? We were married in 1938. Oh. That was just really the kind of the end of the Depression, but it was still there. Yeah. It was still there, and uh, things were not, were not easy. Um, and then, of course, after the war, when we came back, uh, when we finally got back to Portland, things were so different then. We couldn't find a place to live. We had to live in a hotel for a year and a half before we found an apartment. Because then things were booming. Mm -hmm. Then things were booming or doing so well? or Well, they weren't booming things. No, right after the war, war, you know, the jobs were, were no jobs. There was no housing. Because during the war, you see, everything had been for the war effort. Right. So, mm. 
Mm. So did he stay with the military or was this driving no, and no. came back to work? No. See, he, um, he, we were living in Tacoma, and Glenn had his business. He had partners and he had a printing business. And he was drafted. So he sold his interest in the business to his partners, and his draft was canceled. Now we sold everything, everything was gone. So he had um, an offer here in Portland at Commercial Ironworks. So that's how come we came to Portland. And I quit my job, and we came to Portland in um, December 31st, 1942, New Year's Eve, oh, and he was redrafted in March oh. of 43, and then he was taken that night. And then you didn't join him until March of 44 in Atlantic City. So he because he had to go through basic training and everything, and I... He went through basic training, and then he went to uh, Fort Logan, Colorado, uh, to a statistical school, and then he was transferred to um, Atlantic City, New Jersey, and that was where I joined him. What is a statistical school? Well, it was a unit where they kept track of everybody in the service. Oh. He was with the Army, Air Force, uh, it was the Air Force, but it was the Army Air Force. Interesting. And he had a he had a pretty demanding job because I know when I first went to uh, Atlantic City, he worked long hours. He was head of that stat unit. He was a, a, a an enlisted man. But um, anyway, they worked hard in those days. So he never went overseas? No. He tried, but he tried several times and even took training, but he was, uh, because of his age, they wouldn't put him, he wanted to be a gunner, and he took training for that, but he was, uh, there was an age limit, so he didn't, he never got to go overseas. But he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Wow. And of course, the interesting part of that was, that after the war was over and before he was discharged, he was called for overseas duty. So, we pulled a whole strings because he figured he tried so hard to go overseas and they would never send him. And then when it's all over, they're going to send him. So, anyway, we pulled a whole strings so he didn't have to go. Uh-huh. But that was sort of an interesting thing because, you see, I, when I went to Atlantic City, I went to work for the same outfit, the Army Air Force. Oh, you did? And uh, I was a civilian employee, and I worked, uh, I was secretary to Lieutenant Colonel Gordon Stover, who was, who is, you know, Stover Foods? Uh-huh. That's it. Oh. <laughs> and uh, her, he was a lieutenant colonel. And so I worked for him all the time that I was uh, in the service. And that was very interesting. We were in Atlantic City, and our offices were two different places, but principally at Convention Hall. That's where they had the Miss America pageant for up until this last year. Uh huh. Our offices were there, and then we moved to Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. And we were in Louisville from um, April until. A forty-four. Forty-five. Forty-five. Oh, discharge nine of forty-five. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so from Louisville, what month was that? I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. From you went to Louisville in what month? I didn't hear you. What month did you go to Louisville? April. April. Okay. So April to September, nineteen forty-five in Louisville. And you transferred with Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Stouffer. Oh, and he was quite a man. It was really quite an experience working for him. 
And his family, or did he create so many? No, his family was uh, his family. not in the service. They were in Cleveland. Because that was the headquarters for the Stouffer's. You see, in those days, Stouffer's weren't in the uh, frozen food business. It was strictly restaurants. Oh. And they had restaurants in um, Ohio and um, in um, Georgia, and I, I don't know where else. How interesting. And he uh, he had a brother, and there was just the two brothers, Gordon and uh, Vernon Stoker, and they later sold out to uh, Lytton Industries. But uh, Colonel Stoker died quite young, not, uh, not too many years after the war he died. Okay. Um, I guess this question about a typical family dinner was probably never very typical, but mm-hmm. probably out of different times when you ate with your aunt and uncle. What was a typical family dinner like? Did you all eat together at one time? Oh yes, uh-huh. we all did. And uh, good food, and Edna was a wonderful cook. And what were some of your favorite foods that she prepared? I don't remember anything specifically. Everything was good. Uh, I particularly liked desserts. <laughs> she she <laughs> made wonderful desserts. Mm. She was a wonderful cook. Oh, that's nice, question. And you said before that holidays were pretty much celebrated the same way as everybody mm-hmm. else. Nothing really yeah. special to start me. Okay. In some of the larger ways, how is the world today different from what it was like when you were a child? <laughs> That's well, a big question. The larger way is uh, certainly uh, when I was a wee child, um, Tommy. And, uh, for instance, uh, you see, the, you had no plumbing, so a washing machine, you didn't have a washing machine, you had one, but it was a handheld rear, and you had to fill it and empty it, and it was just a little cup. Oh. And, uh, oh, I hated wash day. I hated wash day because you had to put on the, we had a wood stove, of course, in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and you had to put a boiler, a great huge boiler would be on top of the stove. And that, you would put your clothes in that, I don't know, to sanitize them, I guess, and then you put them in the washer and wash them, and then you had to hand wring everything. I think that's where the expression wash day came from, because it would take a whole day to do laundry. Now it can take almost a whole day if you forget to change loads. (laughs) Not because of the work. So washing machines and plumbing. Well, and uh, refrigeration. We had no refrigeration in those days. That's a question we should be asking, refrigeration. So what did you do with things? Did they sit outside? What about during the summertime? How did you refrigerate things or did you just not? Ice. Ice. Oh. Only an ice box. Ice box. Oh, right, right, right. And how common was, according to the histories that I've read and the journals, it was mostly horses, buggies, and slaves, but by the time you were growing up, was it more cars or still or somebody kind of? Well, I can remember uh, the slaves. I don't remember. I think we had a car. We had a Ford car before I left the Heber. It was a, an open touring car. I remember it very well. That probably was when I was 11 or 12. An open touring car, like a convertible? Oh, no, just 
had a top on it, but no sides. Oh, all right, I right, read right. okay. It was a board, I remember it was a board. Okay. What was your father's full name? I probably have that, but just to be sure. What was what? Your father's full name? Ernest Cullen. And I've never known where the Cullen came from. But you know, um, Frank's son, uh, Stuart, his, his middle name is Cullen. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. All right, that's him. Stuart and Cynthia and Sasha are leaving for India next week, and this is their ninth trip. Um, is it for pleasure, or do they go to the humanitarian? No, they go. It's sort of missionary work. You see, they take their Sasha with them. Sasha they uh, adopted from India when she was a baby, and she's now 21. And, of course, they always take Sasha with them. Uh-huh. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. And what did your father do for a living throughout his life? I think we talked about some of the things, the minor. He had well, of course, he had the little wagon, then he had the store, and the little store, and then he sold insurance for many years. That was what he did in Salt Lake, and that was principally what he did. And he did a lot of temple work. a job in itself. And the store and the wagon were both in Heber. Right? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Describe some of his talents. Describe what? Some of his talents or his hobbies. Well, I don't know that he had any particular hobbies. And, of course, his talents uh, were many. His 